So we'll focus on the uh, following new ANSA and meta topics for this session for both the disciplines of uh, durability and the disciplines of composites. Uh, so to summarize very briefly, this will be topics of the pretension assistant now supporting the Nastran NX solver as it relates to solid bolts, uh, the pretension assist, or I'm sorry, pretension functionalities with regard to FE representations in the ANSA connection manager, a note to surface contact type through the contact assistant, the ability to calculate interference for uh, uh, contacts, for example, as well as to be able to now read your contacts in um, perhaps a more uh, user-friendly uh, format. And there should be the ability to uh, load your results map or results through integration points, as well as there's a new solver within the ANSA cross-section tool called FE2D. And there's some updates with, with regard to handling steps and load cases as it relates to includes, as well as a, a, a workflow with regard to functionalities uh, with a random analysis in the MetaDB, as well as a completely new toolbar to version 22 called the Identify and Report Hotspots Toolbar. In addition to these durability updates, we have a few new ANSA updates for the discipline of composites as it relates to the homogenization tool for a mean field homogenization of heterogeneous composites and also a new laminate functionality uh, as it relates to volumization. So let's go ahead and get started uh, with the durability ANSA topics. The ANSA pretension assistant can now define bolt for the pretension keyword and bolt four for the pretension force keyword as required in Nastran NX. The wizard can either automatically detect the bolt direction through a local coordinate system generated by the section's normal vector, or the user can define the local coordinate system manually. Moreover, the automatic detection of contacts between the solid bolt and the nearby parts is also possible via the Calculate Contacts checkbox, and also a generic entity builder of the boundary condition type can also be created for further handling of the pretension via the Create GEB BC checkbox. So we'll show a quick demo video here, uh, so it's a bit more clear, but as you can see, beginning with version 22, the ANSA pretension assistant can actually be found under the analysis tools drop down menu, as was just shown. And we see here that there's now the option for the NX Nastran solver as with, as with the typical FE entity representation types, such as node sets, uh, property, surfaces, etc. One can then select a node from the screen to define the position of the pretension plane. They can then select the second node to define the normal vector of that plane and thus characterize the location and orientation of the pretension plane. Next, they can define the direction of the pretension load for that pretension plane. They can do this either by specifying a local user-defined coordinate system, as shown here, or by selecting one of the global axes, as shown here. In addition, they can just grab and reference a coordinate system from the section's normal vector from the previous step. And in this way, one can quickly characterize the pretension load direction. Next, you can decide and populate what entities you're going to generate from this wizard with regards to pretension. This can include a number of different uh, entities, such as a generic entity builder of the boundary type, the bolt for keyword to capture the bolt force on the pretension plane, 
as well as uh, generating contact entities uh, for the nearby regions to capture the uh, contacts in nearby regions of the bolt. And once finished, as can be seen here, your uh, left-hand side tree hierarchy should be populated accordingly uh, with the entities requested from the pretension assistant. Next, the new pretension representation in the solid bolt connection FE representation type for the ANSA connections manager is now available, which enables automatic generation of pretension parametrically to the thread length of the solid bolt. This is followed by the definition of the appropriate steps and loading conditions and is compliant with numerous solvers, including Abacus, ANSA, Celestina, Nastran, PAMCRASH, et cetera. So basically, uh, one can, for the Abacus deck, for example, generate a boundary condition, a pretension section, and a C load. And for the other solvers, an equivalent representation exists. Automatic detection of node to surface contacts through the ANSA contact assistant is now available. The detection is based on the proximity characterized by the distance and angle between opposite surfaces, which is applicable on T-junction areas, as shown in the example here. Through the wizard, flipping the primary and secondary surfaces is available, as well as inspection of the contents of the surfaces by expanding or shrinking the surface region. And we'll have a quick example here. One can access the ANSA contact assistant as shown. As can be shown in the following steps, automatic detection of node to surface contacts through the ANSA contact assistant is now available. The detection is based on proximity, which is characterized by the distance and angle between the opposite entities, which is applicable on T-junction areas, such as this, for example. One can box select the uh, kind of candidate regions uh, for the uh, contact assistant to identify the candidate contacts. Uh, as stated, the detection is based on the proximity, which is characterized by the angle and distance user input values. The corresponding sets are created. And then one can see there's the standard wizard to inspect your contacts and uh, assess if the result is as expected and further handle the result as needed. You'll see there's the five options within this menu for expanding the highlighted uh, primary or secondary surface region, shrink the region, restore to the uh, uh, initial configuration, or you can always select modify to manually modify and handle the regions. You can also flip the primary and secondary surfaces and as needed. And you can also see here, the, the text box here was kind of covering it up, but there's a, a box there to uh, visualize contact surface distance where you can visualize the uh, clearance, for example, uh, between the regions if needed. Next, the function for calculating the interface closure has been enhanced. The function is applied on both shell to solid and solid to solid contact surfaces which are penetrated. The calculated values is equal to the maximum penetration between the surfaces. Uh, so practically speaking, when you move to your contact assistant list, or I'm sorry, your contact list in AMSA, there will be an update clearance, for example, uh, to uh, characterize this value. And as mentioned earlier, there's also a separation plot um, in the previous uh, demo checkbox to grab a, sep a separation graph of contact clearance. ANSYS supports a robust interface for defining various contacts. The complete general contact domain for Abacus, 
with all the options, which can be characterized by multiple keyword definitions, can now be defined and viewed in one card within ANSA. This contact info card is created for the abacus contact pair and contact inclusion types. In a similar manner, the contact domain in the MARC deck has been organized in a more compact and easy to handle way via the contact info card. Regarding the results mapper tool, integration points over the thickness can also be taken into account for the mapping. This can be achieved by directly defining the integration points option as shown here for the source location and target locations. If this option is defined, only radial basis functions as the interpolation method can be used. The supported variables for the mapping, such as strain, equivalent plastic strain, and stress, are the ones whose definitions are support for the respective decks, such as Abacus, Elastine, etc. If the option auto, which is the default old option, is selected instead of the new integration points option, the center of gravity of the shell or solid will be taken into account uh, for the results mapping tool. A new FE2D cross-section solver is now available. The cross-section properties for both thin and solid sections can be calculated with the new FE2D analysis. So for those familiar with the tool, this now totals to a beta solver, an FE solver, and an FE2D solver. Among the beta and FE solvers, this new FE2D solver is available as an option in the cut and multi-cut functions of the cross-section analysis tool and also accessible in the cross module. This new solver uh, uh, creates 2D mesh. Abacus step and load case keywords can now be split into separate include files, as shown in this figure, for example. Let us look at an example with three steps where one step possesses three load cases. So we'll go ahead with uh, an example in the slides here. During output, Contents of the steps and load cases are placed in the respective include file, as can be seen here in the includes list. And uh, let us focus on the specific step possessing three load cases here. As expected, the include, uh, as expected, I should say the main file points to the discussed include file. Now, we see that this particular include file will point to the discussed load cases in that include file. So basically, uh, you have an include file here, which could have been created with typical pull and drag with ANSA. Um, that main file will point to the include file here, and if that main file now possesses various load cases, that load case file will point to, or that include file will point to each respective load case. And all these include files can be intuitively created in ANSA. Let's move on to meta durability topics. Through the new feature of the modal response tool and the random response tool, it is now possible to perform a random vibration analysis given the model, the modal stresses of the specimen and the PSD table of the excitation uh, created from the solver or entered manually. Specifically, the new features are the modal response tool is now able to output results into a MetaDB file, as can be kind of shown in this workflow graphic here. And the random response tool now supports the MetaDB format as a frequency input. So basically, in this way, a user can set up an FRF subcases 
in the modal response tool, output the FRF stresses into a MetaDB in Meta directly and use this MetaDB as an input together with uh, some load PSD in order to set up a random analysis in Meta. So basically you can have uh, an entire workflow more or less directly contained in the Meta environment now for uh, a random analysis in this type of case, for example. And then the modal responses calculate the FRFs stored in the respective uh, MetaDB and allow for the multiple random response analyses. It's also worth noting when we always discuss MetaDB, the MetaDB with its lossless compression capabilities is a powerful tool for really storing any results from a modal response, either in 3D, 2D, or both. So now we'll move to a new toolbar that is new to version 22 and above. The new Meta Identify and Report Hotspots toolbar can facilitate the identification of hotspot areas within a user's model with respect to a specified scalar in Meta, while generating a series of annotated images of the hotspots. We will begin by focusing on uh, the first three tabs here. In the first tab, one can specify the entity type and logical criteria at which the hotspots will be identified. In the second tab, one can set the views of each annotated hotspot from the first tab. A list exists to toggle through the identified hotspots, and the views can then be defined in the tab and viewed in the corresponding 3D viewer when highlighted. In the third tab, one can control the output directory of the report and upon prompting the Create Presentation button, a report will be output, the images of the hotspot views will also be output, as well as an index file mapping the images as some, and some information about those images uh, to the image names. And uh, an example on that will uh, follow so it will be a bit more clear. Also, this new Meta Identify and Report Hotspots tool supports customization by allowing the user to specify Python scripts in which the respective script will be prompted upon either generating a report or specifying the customization annotation. And this will become more clear through some examples. So my expert colleague uh, Harish provided the following video here of this new toolbar in action on uh, one of his uh, demo examples here. A user can select the entity type at which they want to extract uh, hotspot regions, as well as further filter with respect to that entity type. For those familiar with the advanced filter, you can then select logical criterion at which to implement the hotspot identification. And if you're familiar with the advanced filter, the nomenclature there will be pretty familiar. Next, you select the Create button, and with respect to the logical criteria on the first tab, hotspots are identified. So we'll parse through these uh, hotspots here, or Harish will in this uh, video, and we'll see that the hotspots become highlighted and active in the window, and all other information that is not relevant right now becomes grayed out or highlighted. So as we look, we can parse various views of this hotspot and append those views to that particular row and that particular annotation. We can create our own view, select best view, and we can continue to add views as well as toggle the placement of the annotation. One thing that uh, I notice here um, is we'll see that there's some higher uh, scalar value regions with respect to the current scalar value annotated in this particular version. It looks like uh, there's an RBE rigid body element um, at the center of uh, the hole there. And in this particular version, it appears that RBE 
or elements connected to an RBE are not considered uh, for this particular version. So we can continue highlighting through these uh, annotations and prepare them for an output report. Next, we can... Uh, sorry to interrupt. Uh, we have seven more minutes and we have uh, three questions to answer. So yeah, we can plan. Okay, so I'll uh, finish up the following topics a bit uh, quickly. So we'll move on and uh, I'll, uh, you know, I'll discuss with the experts on outstanding issues related to this tool, but we'll quickly with about uh, a few more minutes a look at this video I quickly prepared about customization. So you can go to the customis customization tab and I create a very small script and you can see that you can link Meta's robust customization Meta API environment to the corresponding Meta toolbars and in this way move your images that you output from this report, for example, to a report either through automation or in this case, a semi-automatic case of generating your own report. This is a simple example, but it's worth noting that you don't need to go through the effort to create a UI as I did in my example. I'm creating a UI so a user can select the locations to move each picture to. Uh, basically, if you have a report template, you have various images and you can swap each image with each slide. Normally, this would be done through automation hard coded into the script or through a configuration file, but you can also use user input to assign the images from this hotspot identification tool to a template as shown here. You can do it through user interface, user input selection, a configuration file or just hard coded into your report such that you don't need, for example, a user interface at all. You just have this report template created automatically and all the picture assignment is not done in the UI. It's just handled in the background. So I'll go through this very, very quickly, but two more slides on composites and then we'll be briefly um, finished. Basically, the ANSA homogenization tool can be used for mean field homogenization of heterogeneous composites. With regard to RVE generation, the homogenization tool can basically generate now periodic boundary conditions as shown here. And the periodic boundary conditions will then create a ready to run model for the homogenization tool such that you can generate an entire load case for a heterogeneous composite and send that, for example, to a nonlinear solver. And understanding we're running quick on time, I'll just uh, skip ahead to this video. One can populate the homogenization tool to characterize the heterogeneous composite with inclusions and a matrix material. One can define their inclusion material uh, here, one can then generate FE for their um, uh, for their RVE to get an RVE. This exists in previous ANSA versions, but now one can generate periodic boundary conditions for their RVE, as can be seen here, such that you have a ready to run load case. You'll see we have the RVE here uh, for a uh, various user-defined heterogeneous composite. And we, we navigate to the left-hand side of our screen. We have now periodic boundary conditions that were developed for this RVE. We have contacts that were developed for this RVE. And we have now um, also a, a controlled displacement through the single point constraints for this RVE. So if we... Uh, uh, take a look at maybe the displacement values and the constraint information for these SPCs. We can see that we have a ready to run load case with boundary conditions, uh, maybe a controlled displacement, contacts, and also, again, 
for a NASTRAN case, we have the corresponding header for these cases. So I'll go ahead and move on, but we're available if you have uh, any more details on how to create periodic uh, boundary uh, conditions as shown here. Finally, for my last slide, we have the unvolumized function for solid composites now. In the antilaminate tool, a new function on volumized composites has been introduced in order to convert solid laminate properties to the respective laminate shell property. It is basically the opposite of the volumized function in many ways. Their stacking can be defined with a single element or per ply, and the function is accessible in the laminate tool or in the respective list.